so I guess I'm in a, a pretty similar situation to uh, to Jasmine at the moment because I I'm a consultant, so I go in perhaps like once a week. Um, so yeah, it's very challenging to apply one my my overarching philosophy, but two the the periodized philosophy to nutrition as well. It's it's very challenging, and um, I also work at, at other clubs. So I work with uh, Brentford and Chelsea women. So it gets really chaotic in my head, like managing different periodized programs is very, very, uh, yeah, it gets crazy at times. And you can imagine what my WhatsApp messages look like. It's, it's uh, carnage. Uh, but my kind of philosophy, my overarching philosophy as a practitioner can be kind of summarized as uh, simple, meaningful, and with purpose. So I'll kind of go into that in a little bit more detail, but I guess it, it's pretty concise and, and it's, uh, it, it describes quite well how I work as, as a practitioner. So simple in the way that uh, everything is delivered. So everything has to be actionable. So for instance, we come straight out of university and we, we know that like roughly people need to eat 30 grams of protein, but that, that really isn't that actionable. We need to translate that into something that someone can go away and actually apply immediately. Um, so you need to talk in the language of food. Um, so I then translate that into like a, a food item. So like a chicken breast for instance or like three or four eggs uh, that kind of thing obviously it's not 30 grams but close close-ish um so yeah everything that, that i do has to be uh, delivered simply and, and in an actionable manner um and then in layman's terms as well so uh, ultimately we're working with with footballers their primary interest is uh, is scoring goals and being on the football pitch so uh, they're not really interested in scientific jargon so if you go at them with words like muscle protein synthesis or carbohydrate oxidation then the reality is they'll just turn around and like go somewhere else and ignore you so uh, you have you again have to translate that into into like layman's terms words that they can resonate with um so rather than say muscle protein synthesis you can es essentially just say build uh, or build foods um, and then it also has to be relevant as well so um it, it in order for the to build buy-in, for instance, and things like that, then uh, we have to make uh, the, the messages that we we deliver like relevant to the sport um, and relevant to, to how it's going to benefit them. Because um, ultimately, their main aim is just to get out and play football. Um, some, some may value nutrition more than others, uh, but the reality is they just want to put their boots on and, and kick the ball around. So if we can kind of uh, make a message more relevant um, and more related to the sport and how it's going to benefit them, um, then that, that's obviously going to really benefit as well. So uh, we, we, all, we, we definitely have to speak in the language of football as well. Um, so how, how is it going to benefit them as, as a footballer? Uh, so yeah, that, that's kind of like the, the simple aspect. Um, similar to, uh, to Laura, we have um, like a, a really simple, uh, we actually have a color coded system. So um, obviously we're working with like various different nationalities. So um, the language barrier can be quite difficult at times, but every, every uh, culture and every country understands color, I, I would hope. So um, if, if we just kind of build that color coding system and implement it across the club. So every item that provides carbohydrate is labeled in yellow. Uh, that's in the dining room and then also in, in and around the, the training ground. Um, and uh, so like sports drinks and those kind of things, uh, they're, they're, they have like yellow tags on them. Um, protein rich foods are billed in red and then boost is, is green and then obviously fluids is, is in, uh, in blue. So again, that really helps to simplify things. Um, it's, it's kind of a descriptive word as well. So they, they start to understand the function of the food or, or the item that they're consuming. Um, and the color coding system helps to overcome some uh, potential language barriers as well. Uh, another thing, so building buy-in, so just going back to the, um, the fact that they just want to play football. So I was fortunate to go and work out in Brazil with, uh, with the club over in, in Rio de Janeiro. And um, the, the kit man once told me that, that, that all the players are going to ignore me for like however long I was there for. And most of them did. Um, and I started to realize, well, these guys, they just want to play football. Um, and so I need to kind of convince them that what I'm telling them is going to actually impact their ability to just go and play football, whether that be adding um, minutes to the end of the game so they, they can run for five minutes longer um, or, or adding years to their career, perhaps. Uh, I just need to kind of get that into their head that, that nutrition is valuable um, and that, that way I can start to build some buy-in. Um, and that was really uh, an eye-opening experience for me, to be honest, because uh, 
yeah, it's uh, it's a different culture out there. They um, football is is life, and it's just uh, just pure entertainment. They just want to get out there and play. Um, so then, moving on to the mean, meaningful part. So uh, obviously, sports nutrition is as an industry is is growing rapidly, and there's new and novel things, supplements, uh, new dietary interventions, new uh, like the the low carbohydrate approach, all those kind of things, and. Um, I, I try and avoid uh, the, the kitchen sink a, a approach and try and be critical of every new or novel uh, like piece of uh, research or um, supplement, whatever it might be. And so, so yeah, be, be critical of everything and, and make sure that everything you do is, is having an impact and, and is actually like having some, has some meaning to it. Um, and then, so going into that in a little bit more detail, so obviously an evidence-based uh, data-informed approach. So uh, utilizing research where, where possible um, and then research within my environment as well. So obviously we have uh, various data streams like uh, GPS, uh, wellness monitoring, um, counter movement jumps, uh, sleep, watches, like we're inundated with data. So in any, any way we can like use that data to inform uh, nutrition decisions is, is valuable because it's one thing knowing what the research is saying, but it's another thing altogether understanding what you're, the players you're working with. Um, and, and oftentimes that population that you're working with is very different to uh, published uh, papers. Um, so it's, it's really important to utilize that data. Um, and, and then uh, more of a systematic approach. So I guess similar to uh, what Laura, Laura and uh, Jasmine just touched on, like it's like a cyclical approach that always evolves and learns from itself almost. So um, it begins with analysis. So that could be analysis of an individual or analysis of a team. Um, and that could be from uh, like nutritional analysis or body composition analysis or game analysis. Uh, if, if the coach wants me to get involved in in, in that kind of thing, uh, like highlighting fatigue at certain stages in games and, and uh, making suggestions on, on what changes could be made. Uh, and then obviously that analysis um, feeds into the intervention stage uh, and, and very similar to, to Jasmine. The, the kind of primary aim there is to uh, first do no harm. So make sure that everything is, is safe and, and, uh, and yeah, respectable and um, reliable. And then it kind of spins around to the education phase. So uh, obviously every intervention might, some parts of it might be a new thing or a novel thing to the player. So there is gonna be a requirement for education. Um, and then that education hopefully feeds back into the reanalysis. So we then reanalyze and think, okay, well, has that edu uh, intervention or education, has that been beneficial? Um, if not, then we need to change it. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's a cyclical approach that continues to develop, uh, learn from mistakes, uh, learn from failures and it continues to improve. Um, so what you saw last season is going to be probably, well, hopefully different in some way uh, next season. So it just continues to, to improve. Um, and I guess <laughs> pyramids, we all like pyramids uh, in nutrition. Um, so very similar to, to Laura. Um, so my um, early on in my career, I, I realized that I was focusing too much on the, the top of the pyramid. Um, like it supplement interventions around game day, like uh, carbohydrate during exercise, or carbohydrate during at half time, that kind of thing. I was I was putting too much of my attention on that area. Um, the reality is, uh, lifestyle underpins performance. So the lifestyle of these players uh, is going to make uh, allow them to prepare. Uh, so it's going to al allow them to train at higher intensities. It's allow uh, going to allow them to train more frequently. Um, it's going to allow them to recover better. Um, so that feeds into the preparation stage and a, obviously a, a result of that, uh, the, the, uh, a result of them training more frequently and at higher intensities is then their performance is going to uh, improve as well. Um, so yeah, I focus most of my time now in, in the lifestyle element. So optimizing uh, food choices um, in a similar way to, to Laura touched on before, like uh, recipes, providing nutrition programs, meal guidance. Uh, meal tickets, um, shopping lists, all those kind of things, uh, just to try and focus on that that bottom of the pyramid, really. Uh, and then from there, we can look to uh, to work our way up. Um, ultimately, nutrition can influence every layer of this pyramid, but um, fundamentally, it, it's going to have its biggest impact at, at the bottom, uh, the, the lifestyle part. 
Uh, and then finally, uh, with purpose. So this is more about like the way in which that I work and, and communicate with with the athlete in general. Um, so it's like caring and, and showing you care about them and showing you have a vested interest in their career um, and be passionate about it as well. So um, I am pretty passionate one about I'm, I'm fortunate to work in, in football. And that's one of my passions. But then another passion, strangely enough, is, is food. So um, combining those two things is, is pretty amazing. So any time that I talk about this kind of thing is, is a, yeah, it, it's always it's always great. Um, but yeah, so that, that's uh, my kind of philosophy, if you like. So simple, meaningful uh, and with purpose. 